Hey everyone, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. Hope you guys are having a great day. So in this video, I wanna kinda of give you a quick overview of what object tagging is on S3. And if you're unfamiliar with S3 and how to do things with S3, I'm gonna to try to give you a quick overview and an introduction so that you're not completely lost if you're a beginner. So when you create an Amazon account, you can go to a dashboard called S3. And the S3 dashboard basically allows you to configure the S3 service that Amazon provides. So what S3 is in a nutshell, it's a storage location that you can put as many files as you want. And behind the scenes, Amazon will kind of scale that bucket up um, infinitely to accept as much data as you can possibly upload to it. So in this example, we already created a bucket. Um, I have some other videos on this channel if you want to see how to create a bucket and upload a file to it. But we have a bucket created called WDJ My Uploads. And what I'm going to show you is that inside that bucket, you can actually upload files and you can put tags on that file. So let's just go ahead and click into that. And you can see here we have a file down here at the bottom called test.txt. So if we go ahead and click on that file, I'm gonna show you that if you scroll down to a section that says tags, you can attach a key value pair to that object. Now what this allows you to do is you can dynamically allow permissions based on what the tag value is. So in this use case I'm gonna show you, if PII is true, we don't want to allow anyone access to download this object. But if it happens to be false, then we should allow anyone to download it because there's no sensitive information on this object. So a good use case is let's say you have a bucket that holds a bunch of PDFs and some of those PDFs might have social security numbers attached to them inside of them. So you might want to set a, tr a flag of PII to true on that object to prevent people from downloading those objects and looking at the PDFs themselves. All right, so now that I showed you that we have a bucket with an item in it, and that item has a tag called PII of false, what I'm also gonna show you is in the IAM dashboard, this is another, another service that Amazon provides where you can go in and configure users and give those users policies. And basically these policies are for configuring what that user should be able to access, right? For an example, if you want that user to be able to access S3, you need to configure that user to be able to access S3 or any of the other services like EC2 or OpenSearch. I already have a user called WDJ and I have some credentials already set up on my VS Code. So if I click on this user, I'm going to show you real quick what the policy is set up to be. So this user has one policy on it and I created this policy to basically give the user permission to that bucket. So if we look at this policy, it is kind of comprised of two statements. And if you're kind of new to IAM and what policies are, basically it's some JSON that describes what the policy should allow that user to access. So in this case, we have one statement that says this user should have access to call s3.get object. And we'll see in a second that this is actually like, there's a Node.js equivalent in the code for calling this method. And we're saying allow this user to call this method on this resource, right? So this is the name of the bucket um, that we created. It's also This is also called an ARN, but this is the bucket name. And then we say slash give us access to every item that's in that bucket. That's what the star means. But the important part of this resource policy is that I also have a condition attached to it, right? This condition is saying only allow the user to download this if the object doesn't have a tag that says PII of true, okay? So this is the key phrase string not equals if exists. So if there is a tag on this object called PII and it happens to not equal true, then we can have access to that object. So let's just go ahead and try this out. I have this already set up in my VS code. So I should be able to call s3.get object. So if you're kind of new with how you do Amazon related calls inside of Node.js. Basically, there's a library called AWS SDK that you can install locally. And then using that, you can kind of instantiate new objects that allow you to access the different resources. So in this case, we're instantiating a new S3 object. And this S3 object has a bunch of methods on it that you can upload files to a bucket or read files from a bucket. So in this case, we're saying call s3.get object on the bucket name WDJ my uploads and then try to fetch the file called test.txt, right? And one thing I'll point out is that this get object method is actually the exact same action that we have configured on this policy. So it kind of maps up one-to-one -one and you can get more granular and add more actions as you need them. So let's just go ahead and run this and we'll see that we get back a response and that prints out the body that has a bunch of like 
bytes of a buffer. But this is the file, basically. This is the file that we have in that bucket, and we see that we got it back. So what I'm trying to show you with the tagging is if I actually go back to that item, and I change this to true, the way we have our policy set up is that we shouldn't allow any user to download this file if it has PII set to true. So I went ahead and changed that tag, and we can go and verify that it's set to true now. You can see here it's set to true. And what I'm going to do is try to re rerun that script, and you will see that we get an access denied. So now no user can download that file who happens to have the policy that we set up with that condition. So that is just one use case for tags. I think there's some other things that you can do with tags, such as like set up CloudWatch metrics to analyze when certain tag items are uploaded to your bucket. And you can also create like billing dashboards based on the tags to figure out like which files are costing the most on your S3 bucket. But I'm not going to cover those in this video, but I think there's a couple of other cool use cases that would be interesting to read up on if you have some free time. Um, two things I want to show you before I wrap this up is that sometimes you want to get back the list of tags that are on an object. All right, so this is a way you can do it. You can call get object tagging on that file, and that should print out all the tags for us. So let's just go ahead and print out console log tags and try to rerun the script. All right, so that prints out a tag set, which happens to be an array of key value pairs. You can see here we got PIF true. And you can kind of do this if you need to further analyze the object to see if you should do some type of processing on it. And then also in code, and let me just show you this just because it's good to know more. You can actually change tags dynamically inside of code too. All right, so here's another method that is going to basically overwrite the existing tag set with a new tag set called put object tagging. Again, it's the same format as the one above, but the uh, additional argument you pass in is called tagging, and you pass in a new tag set. So I could kind of run this and go back to the dashboard and verify that it added a new tag called WDJ. So let's go back, and I'm going to go ahead and refresh this page, and scroll back down to the tag section, and you see that it added a new tag here and changed this one to false. So that's basically how in Node.js you can add new tags or you can basically read the current tags on an object. Um, I just kind of want to show you those just in case you wanted to see a couple more methods that are related to tagging. All right, so there's one last thing I kind of wanted to show that you can do with tagging. So on a bucket, there's something called lifecycle policies where you can kind of define when items should be like expired or deleted for you automatically. So if you go to the bucket and click on this management tag, you can go to lifecycle rules. And if I went here and created a lifecycle rule, you can actually have it delete items based on if it has a tag or not so i could like say like a delete rule and then down here you can actually say add a tag so i'm going to say add a tag here and i can say pii of true so let's say the use case is after like seven days you want to make sure you delete any files that have a pii on them so you could add that tag and then down here you can say expire current version if you're using like version buckets you know this would change depending on what you want but you can basically say after seven days, go ahead and delete any object that has a tag of PII true. Obviously this won't, I can't demo this because this won't actually do anything um, unless we wait seven days. But that's just another cool thing that you could do with tagging. And I think it's really important to understand that there's like various different use cases for tagging that you might be able to use um, in the future if you just know that they exist. That is a good overview of what tagging is and what you can do with it. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Also leave a comment below if you have another use case that you have used at your company or your project for S3 tagging. Um, and like always, be sure to subscribe if you're new to this channel because I'm going to have other videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you become a better web developer and DevOps engineer.